our story and I just think that's invaluable. So thank you, Erica. Um, right now I'm gonna share my story, but before I just wanna pray. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we come before you on your throne of grace and just thank you. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to come together in community. We're here for light and we're here for love and to hear your encouragement, Father. Today, Father, thank you for using me, for using my story. I ask that you cover these ladies, that you open their minds and they soften their hearts. They may be hearing my story, Father, but it's all your glory. Amen. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, ladies. All right. So, my name's Crystal, like she said. <laughs> Um, I grew up in church, so I grew up with Catholic parents, um, so God was something that I knew about, right? I had a relationship with him, but things started going sour when I was like 17. I um, found out I had a tumor, and this tumor um, affected my development. It actually affected my reproductive system. I was told at that time that I would um, never have kids. But I was 17, I wasn't even trying to have kids. <laughs> so, um, whatever, like it affected me, but you know, it like didn't face me, right? Um, my question, I was like, God, like why? I'm not gonna be a mom, okay, whatever. Fast forward a couple months, I find out that my father actually has stage four pancreatic cancer, that he only had three months to live. Um, I was still a senior in high school, I had no idea what all of this information was up. Like, um, thankfully, he was with us for a year and a half. I was able to be with him, but cancer consumed him. Cancer consumed the whole family. I became very, very dark and very bitter. I resented God. Why was this happening to me? I can't be a mom ever, and um, I wouldn't even have a dad. Okay. Um, I had to assume a role that I just wasn't ready for. I had to be the provider. My dad was a provider. Um, so I went out and got a big girl job. <laughs> my first day of my big girl job, I remember I was so excited and I was running out. My dad at this point was, had become a vegetable, but he was living at the, at the, at the hospital. And I remember a nurse coming after me and she held my hand and she goes, um, sweetie, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm going to go to work. You know, here's my number. Contact me if anything. I'll be back by five. She was like, okay. She held she held my hand and she goes, hold on, she said, and I'll never forget these words. 20 years, with my 27 years of experience, your father doesn't have more than 24 hours. She was right. I walked into the room and they witnessed my father's last breath. It was so strange though, because in that moment I felt like a thief. It was very, very strange. But of course, I'm so young, I just ignored it. and. Time flew and just became working and I started questioning God and his existence and I became very bitter and dark and um, got into very toxic relationships, started drinking, started partying, started trying to forget, you know, um, I met this guy, which later became my husband, but, you know, I didn't know him at the time. I didn't appreciate him at the time. <laughs> um, um, I decided one day to just take matters into my own hands and kill the pain a different way. I started taking pills. Within 72 hours, I had consumed a whole bottle of Tylenol. My friend saw what was happening. So she rushed me to the hospital only to find out I was 22, 22 weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. I had no idea a blessing. I didn't see it that way. I started questioning God, why me? Well, I can't even be responsible over myself. How can I be responsible for a child? I hated him. I hated him for everything that I was going through, everything. Because I was already high risk. Um, I was already 22 weeks, I was high risk, so they gave me more um, more frequent appointments. I was visiting like every week, and every single appointment, it just felt like I was finding out something different. 
when I tell my parents that, that my son was gonna be Down syndrome. The next one, I found out that he was gonna come without a leg. They couldn't find a leg in the sonogram. And my hatred just formed, that was so dark. This child's burning. I didn't want my child. <laughs> Eventually, appointments came, appointments came. They found more complications. I had a split placenta and they, um, they couldn't, I couldn't birth him. So, because I would birth the placenta before the child and he would die. So they operated and maybe did a C-section. And I remember in that, in that bed, I heard a word. I heard the word surrender. But it was between, um, my anesthesia was wearing off and the pain and I was very clouded. Up to this point, I didn't even have a name for this child that I had just given birth to. About three hours later, um, I finally got to see him, and uh, I think it was like the next day or something, the nurse came and asked for his name, and I didn't even know. I don't know. But somehow, um, I just like, the word Ezekiel rolled off my tongue. I had given birth to a very healthy child. Mm. had all his plates. I named him Ezekiel, which I didn't know at the time, but his name means God's strength mm. in Hebrew. I had no idea. I was still very dark and very, very resentful. I kept, I talked to God, but it was not in the way that you and I speak to him now. I hated him. I didn't know what to do. But life goes on, right? <laughs> So, you know, months and months go by, me figuring this life out, right? Um, my son, thankfully healthy baby, healthy, joyful baby, I began to uh, start loving him. I, I understood what love was. And um, there was one day, I remember he was like a year and a half, and Ezekiel didn't walk. That was the only thing, he didn't walk very soon. He walked, um, he started taking his steps like at one and a half. But he talked, he, he would say words. But he never said sentences, he would just say words. Um, and I remember I was taking him to daycare one day in the morning to my big girl job. And, um, <laughs> and uh, he said, your daddy is proud. At that moment, Not only did I receive the closure from my earthly father, but I never got. I understood that there was a heavenly father that was greater than me. Yeah. All I did was cry. I just cried and cried and cried, and I ran to my friend, the one that took me to the hospital, and I told her what was happening. She took me to church. And um, I just kept coming. It was very empty. I didn't understand why I was coming. Not here, it wasn't ever church, but I just kept going and going and going and going and going. But eventually I heard Pastor JJ through a friend. Um, I started listening to his sermons for about a year because I was too scared to come. She didn't want to come to this church, she wanted to stay at our church, but I didn't want to come by myself, so I was just listening to him, like his podcast. <laughs> um, and then one day I just came out by myself. Nobody. <clears throat> to just make sure that I highlight because uh, sorry I truly didn't know how I was even per now look back looking back at it now I truly didn't even know how I was able to provide during that time I just want you to know that he is our provider I honestly don't know I didn't know what inside of a restaurant looked like for a very long time but I didn't go hungry He's a miracle worker. Those angels that came to me, that nurse, my friend, my son. That's not a coincidence. Okay. Somebody once told me I was never going to be a mom. 
my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody told me I was gonna lose my father. I think he's gonna make one. Yeah. And now when I look back on my story, for a very long time, I, I only saw my footsteps. I look back and I no longer see them as mine. I understand that they're his and he was carrying me the whole time. Yeah. Oh my God. And so there's only one thing that I regret from everything. It's so just, why didn't I say this sooner? Why was I silenced for so long? I learned that the enemy uses his tactics to silence us, to avoid us from sharing hope and glory. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you guys that you might not be able to connect with my story, but share yours. That's right. We need, we need each other. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys for listening. Yeah. I actually got to hear a piece of her. So she was part of my freedom group. Like, it was like forever ago, but at least I think it was like a year ago. <laughs> it was like it was so long ago. It was like two years ago. It was like two years ago. Okay. Um, and she got to share a piece of it, but I know that that was something that she had never shared before. So yeah. oh. thank you so much for sharing that because I feel like there was not like one dry eye in this place. Nope. And that nope. took so much courage. So thank you. We love you so much. <laughs> and so now I get the honor and privilege of presenting Pastor Alex. She is an amazing woman. Like there was a time in my life where I really needed a mentor and she didn't know this, but I literally had been praying to God that somebody would bring someone that God, he would bring someone into my life who could help me grow um, as a leader. And she answered all my text messages. I felt like I was so annoying. <laughs> I was like, hey, so I have questions about like freedom or this or that because she was at that time like leading freedom at Action Church. So I had so many questions. And also one day I was like, hey, so like. I just feel like I just want to ask you, like, would you be my mentor? Like, you can say no, it's totally fine, but if, if you do say yes, that'd be awesome. And she did, and ever since then, she's met with me. She's, cut, like, literally been like, hey, we haven't met yet, so, like, what's up? Like, let's pick a date. So I called it out when I, when I wasn't available, or, like, when I wasn't making myself available. And so I'm so thankful that she's here, that she took time out, and that she made this beautiful board. Like, I'm just like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys like the charcuterie. Yes. yes. It's something that I started. Am I okay to stand? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm a bit of an animated speaker. So <laughs> some freedom to move. Um, so I started it because I needed something affordable for my wedding. And then it just like became something I really enjoyed. It was like creative outlet. And then I was like, well, let's just do this. And then I found out I was breaking the law. And so then. <laughs> Um, what about licensing? So this was prepared the correct way. Um, so I'm super excited to be with you. Um, like Erica said, my name is Alex. I'm one of the pastors at Action Church. A uh, big fan of Journey. I think um, I'm super excited you guys finally have a building. Praise God for no setup and tear down. I'm in a permanent facility as well, and I'm just like, this is so nice. You get to actually enjoy it. Not sweating by the time people arrive. Yeah. Um, but I've been in ministry like off and on for the last 12 years. Um, I'm a mom of a 10, almost 10 year old, uh, which also means I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, <laughs> we are in that phase. I remember being much older before I thought my parents were idiots. Um, you know, you do not. I can tell that you do not think that. <laughs> Yes, my 10 year old knows everything about everything. Um, my husband and I are in ministry together and we love that. It is there we were talking to somebody earlier who's like considering coming on staff and going into ministry, and we're like, this is the hardest thing you will ever do. Like leading people, especially in the faith realm, is the hardest thing you will ever do, but it's also the most satisfying. Like it there is nothing that satisfies the way loving people and, and walking in your calling does. Um and so I was kind of thinking, like, what are the important things that you need to know about me? Um, and I couldn't really think of anything, like, exciting or, like, this will really wow them. And so um, love ministry, love the Lord, 
I also love like hair and makeup. Okay. Um, and with that hair and makeup love, it has really eliminated some of my outdoor activities. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So like it's never cute when your eyebrow like is like smudging off your eyebrows like running. Um, however, I keep finding myself in these situations where I'm doing like these outdoorsy, adventurous things. And that's just really not me. It's more like somebody's talked me into it and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so recently we went up to Tennessee um, I was super disappointed with the trip because I did not see a bear and I had been told that there would be going to be bears everywhere. My sister was there a week before, there's like a bear crawling on their camper and I'm just like, I can't find a bear to save my life. Um, but I got tricked into uh, going whitewater rafting. Ooh. Has anybody been whitewater rafting? Raise your hand if you've been whitewater rafting. You have, you have, you have. Okay, what is the one rule? Well, yes. Don't stand up. Don't stand up. Don't stand up. We are on our way. Okay, so we get to the place. It's like, there's like this really janky bus that's going to take us to the river. Oh my God. <laughs> they throw the rafts on top. Some of these rip rafts have patches on them, and I'm just like, oh no. Is that patch gonna hold up if I sit on top? Like, I don't know. It makes me a little nervous. And they're like, get your helmet. The helmet stinks. The life jacket's already wet. And I'm like, why is it wet? And it's like, put it on my body. We're like sitting on the bus. I'm very like just serious and they're going through all the rules. And they're like, listen, most important rule, if you fall out of the raft, do not stand up. If you stand up, you will die. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna stand up. And they're like, but this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna wanna stand up. I'm gonna tell you not to stand up. And your first inclination is to stand up. I'm like, okay doesn't matter, I'm not gonna stand up. If I fall out, I'm not gonna stand up, but I'm not gonna fall out because I'm not getting out of this boat. <laughs> and so, we load up. I have never felt just more like, I don't even know how to say it. I was just weird in my own body. Like, I was just like, I don't even know how to do this. And so, important uh, thing about whitewater rafting is you have a oar. You always hold the top, because if you don't hold the top, you're gonna hit your neighbor, right? And nobody wants to lose a tooth. Um, and so I'm like, okay, lock my feet in, I hold the oar, and I don't stand up. I don't stand up, I hold the oar, I lock my feet in. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm going to survive this. And in my head I'm thinking, why am I paying money to survive this? Like, this is the <laughs> backwards thing I've ever done. And um, we get out there. Mind you, our um, instructor, our whitewater, our guide, if you will, um, his name is Ricky Bobby, kid you not. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky Bobby, it's his first day back in five years oh, because oh, he was airlifted oh, no. from a river, whitewater rafting. And I was like, oh, Lord, you. I swear, <laughs> <laughs> we are having words if I meet you today. <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh, no, Ricky Bobby doesn't have teeth. Awesome. And he's like, yeah, he's got like an arm brace on. Holy like, has a, a brace on his arm, like, how's this man gonna get me back in the raft if I fall out? It's one arm. I got 50 pounds on him, easily. He's a little man. And so anyway, we get in, Ricky Bobby does not make the boat. He has to swim, catch up to us, and we go. We're just getting started, guys. We hit a little bump, and the guy behind me falls out of the boat. And I was like, oh my God, it's Gil, it's Gil. And um, Gil floats, he does not stand up, thank God. Floats, somebody else picks him up and like we're fine, we're enjoying, we're doing the rapid thing, right? We're going down and I'm holding my breath every time. But what happens is I am so <laughs> locked in because I'm not going anywhere. Um, I actually start to lose feeling in my feet. Mm. I was, I had, Pastor Evan was in front of me and I like slid my feet under him in a way that I was, <laughs> I mean, you couldn't bribe me from the boat. <laughs> um, I was like, there's no way I'm getting out of here. Like I'm not falling. But then I couldn't feel my feet. And I was like, oh, they're like falling asleep. And then I'm like, no, I can't, like, like, I cannot feel my feet. Like, have you ever done that when you're, like, yeah. asleep, like, and you, like, can pick your arm up, and it's like, yeah. oh, my gosh, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> have you had that? Okay. So I can't, and it's, like, moving up my legs, so I can't feel from, like, my knees down. Oh. My shoe's off. I'm not aware that my shoe is off and in freezing cold water because it's so numb. Wow. Like, I'm numb. Eventually, we make it to our destination. Um, I made it out safely. Feeling came back, was restored. Um... And we said we had a good time. <laughs> uh, there was a, there were pictures that were staged. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> I 
I was just holding my breath the whole time. That was terrible. Um, but why am I telling you all of this? Like, why? What does that have to do with anything? And I think it's important to know, I think especially in this season, in the times that we are in, um, there are often polarizing views in everything, right? We have pol like their polarizing views of fast and vaccinations and presidents and all the things that we can get all up in arms about. And at the end of the day, when Jesus comes back, none of it's going to matter. Right. None of it matters right. in the grand scheme of things. But here we are. Like we all have opinions. We all have our views. And they're typically like there's one extreme or the other. Right. And like hopefully we can find a place that we're like right in the middle and we can all like appreciate other people's values and, and move about life. Um, but I think the church, if we're not careful, can represent both um, myself and then Gil, the one that fell out. Um, and we will pretend for the sake of this illustration that Gil fell out, got stuck, and died. <laughs> Just for the illustration, don't ever tell Gil I said that. Okay? <laughs> uh, but the reality is, is we are in a war. And it is a spiritual war. And you have an enemy. And if you don't know you have an enemy... Your inability to recognize or understand or face the fact that you have an enemy, it does not stop him. It does not detour oh, him. He's right. after you. And so um, I think what we need to do as believers, as women, is we have to be on guard. Mm -hmm. And so um, 1 Peter 5 a it says, be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I think what we can do sometimes is think, like, whenever we hear sin, what's the first thing? There's little ears in the room. What is, what's the first thing that we think of? Things like adultery, yeah. drug use, things like that. Things that are, like, the big sins, right? And that's, like, the first mind. Like, that's the first thing that comes to our mind. But the reality is, is there's several things that fall under that sin umbrella. And typically, when we're sincere in our hearts, but we still have insecurities and just the working out of our faith to do, that they come under um, this bracket. And here's the deal. In that story that I was telling you, there's two people. And the person standing up in the water, their motivation is control. Mm -hmm. They are deliberately disobeying, disobeying, right? Even though they've been told don't stand up, they still stand up. Why? Because it's the natural it's the natural way of doing it, yeah. right? We look at Adam and Eve. This is not like a new thing. Like our disobedience, our need to control, that's nothing new. We've been doing it since forever, right? Uh, and it actually leads to rebellion. And so we see this all throughout history. We see Jonah, like, running from God. We see Moses when he was told, like, you hit that rock, and instead, or, like, you speak to the rock, and instead he hits it, Right? God had already done it one time by, right. by hitting the rock. It's like, well, I already know what God's going to do. Mm. Well, you were told to assume what God was going to do. You were told to be obedient. You were told mm. to speak to it. And so you good. didn't. And so there are consequences for that. Yeah. Uh, we see it with Saul with bringing back the spoils from war, right? Yeah. And that's the one where we get like rebellion is this witchcraft. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. Yeah. But then you see the opposite person in that story, me. I'm locked in. I'm doing everything I've been instructed to do. Okay, bring my T-grip. Got my feet locked in. Not going anywhere. And for us as Christians, as us for believers, it looks like I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm praying every day. I'm going to church. I serve yeah. on the dream team. I'm a lady. Yeah. And what we do is we convince ourselves that going through the motions, that going through our to-do list, our checklist, is what satisfies the Lord. And that's not the reality. That's a religious spirit. That's perfectionism. That's wow, apathy. So that's judgment that's what that person operates in and the reality is it's the flip side of the same coin can you see that that the both the motivation is for you to still be in control and stay in control and so our flesh is always our natural response and it's the ugly part of us and it's the part that we open up when we like willingly participate in sin but then we also have this, this spirit, right? Because we're a triune being. We're spirit, soul, and body, right? Yeah. Most of us have been through freedom. Yeah. Okay. Right? Spirit, soul, and body. When you become born again, you have a new soul. But you still have old flesh and old soul. Mm -hmm. Or you have a new spirit. Old flesh, old soul. Yeah. So if I was fat before I got saved, I'm going to be fat <laughs> after I got saved, right? That, that comes through a revelation of, like, knowing that it's important to, like, take care of your body and all those things. <laughs> we're still working that out in me. Um, <laughs> But on the flip side of the same coin, 
You have people like the Pharisees. You have Martha and Mary. Look at Martha and Mary. In the sincerity of Martha's heart, my girl is working. Yeah. Working. She's setting up everything. She's making sure all the sounds good. She's making sure there's a graphic up here. She's doing all of the things so that everybody can enjoy it. But if her heart is not postured in a place to glean from Jesus, Jesus said, like, Mary has chosen the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so often we can convince ourselves that we are going about the Lord's work and we miss it. And if I were the enemy and I couldn't get you just to like willingly submit to me, I would, what I would do is I would convince you to forfeit your calling, your authority, your dominion, your purpose. I would get you to just shift a little bit because I don't need you to bow down and worship me. I just need you to confess Christ and then be a hot mess and hurt everybody around you. Right. And go through all the religious things, the piety and continue to work that out. And what I need us to hear today is that the root of all of these things, and this might weird some people out, and we're going to clean it up here in a bit. The root of all of this is witchcraft. And you're like, what? How's that witchcraft? Well, we know that the word says that rebellion is as witchcraft, right? And that word as there in the, in the original text is not as, it's rebellion is witchcraft. And so what is witchcraft? A lot of times we think it's like, oh. like Hocus Pocus, we think it's, it's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, it's voodoo, it's like all of these things. But the reality is, witchcraft is simply obtaining godlike results without God. Okay? So it looks like, let's talk about mediums. That's the, ab the ability to connect with the dead or obtain past information. Well, that's called a word of knowledge in the, in the, in the church. But it's going about obtaining those things without God. If you look at, like, voodoo, if you look at, um, like, I don't think they call them spells. They call them something else. But, like, that is power that you're seeking. Well, only power that we need is the power of the Holy Spirit, right? right. Dom do Dallas, dominion. Yep. Um, but instead, we, when we remove God from it, we go about on our own means. Mm -hmm. We can obtain that power through an ungodly source. If you look at fortune tellers. You look at people that... Um, Tarot cards, all those things, predicting in the future. Well, that's called a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a word of, like, the Holy Spirit has the ability to reveal those things to you, right. but going about it without God is witchcraft. Yeah. And what in our life, if we're honest with ourselves, are we going about mm. without God? Mm. My God? Not intentionally. None of us would do that intentionally. But how many times are we in the middle of the throes of something? Kids, sit kids, where are you? <laughs> Who just sh Oh gosh <laughs> Crystal I was like Crystal And then I was like That's not her name Yes it is yes. Like in the throes of life right. And it's like Nope I can't trust I can't trust God yeah. I'm going to take care of this myself yeah. Or no, I can't guarantee That this won't be pain free right. I'm going to take care of myself wow. And we do these things in a, in, a, in a sincerity of our heart Trying to avoid the pain That comes with it Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we were never promised A pain free life yeah. We never promised those things we're told that we will have life and life to the fullest, but I don't know what that looks like for mm -hmm. you. I don't know what it looks like for me, to be honest. All we can do is submit and trust. And I think um, in today's age, we are getting blurrier and blurrier. The lines are coming, becoming more and more faded. It's becoming more and more like we have vibes now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> vibes were like a certain thing when I was growing up that were not okay. Like, right. we have things like going to, like, healers. The only thing that heals is the blood of Jesus. So if you're not healing with the blood of Jesus, I want no part in that. And if that is you in this room today, and you have come into agreement with those things, you do not need to be scared. We can take care of all of that. That's not a big deal. In ignorance or even in willingness, we come into agreement with things all the time that we're not even aware of. Yeah. So if that is you, it's nothing to be scared of. But the blood of Jesus, like those, those things that we come into agreement with are defeated foes. And so that is nothing to be worried about, okay? But the reality is, is the doors that we open, the enemy cannot have access. Erica is sealed by the Holy Spirit, right? Her spirit cannot be occupied. And we're not going to go into all of this because I could get, I don't have permission from your pastor. So, <laughs> But Erica is sealed with the blood of Jesus. Holy yeah. Spirit resides in her. She's a spirit-filled woman. But if she opens herself up right. through sin, 
those things are allowed to come in. The evil of the world is permitted. It has the ability to come in. So when we gossip, that's obtaining yep. information about somebody that the Holy Spirit did not give me permission to obtain. Yep. That's right. When we slander somebody's name, we are speaking things, speaking death, speaking curses. The Holy Spirit didn't give us permission to do that. There yep. are so many things that we, in ignorance or in just our own insecurities, come into agreement with, and it has to come to an end. Yeah. yeah. If you agree, can you say amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Okay. <laughs> and so what do we do? It's very simple. You repent. And you redirect. The word says that no longer be conformed, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Through the word of God. So every lie that is taken in as your own, I'm rejected. I'm not worthy. The Lord hates me. The Lord's punishing me. Every lie that comes in must leave. We turn, right? Repent means to turn away from. So we turn our attention away from that and we 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 renew our mind with what the, the word of the Lord says. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. And so that this morning or yesterday, Eric was like, hey, you want me to make some graphics about what you're saying? I'm like, I'm going to be honest. I don't really have anything that I'm ready to give you yet. And she's like, okay. Of course, super sweet. I was like, these are all leaders, right? She's like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'll do like a leadership thing. And um, I was just like spinning my wheels, guys. And I have, like, notes and notes on leadership. I work for a lead pastor who is passionate about leadership. And so, like, I have a phone full of notes. And nothing was sitting right with me. And I felt like the Lord say that um, specifically for these, the women in this room, um, that it's not by accident that you're here today. It's not by accident the journey that you've been through to this point. That every step and misstep has brought you to this place. Not because today is a big epiphany for you. In fact, for most of you, I'm already confirming what you already know is true. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm speaking, it's just the word of God confirming yeah. what he's already right. spoken yeah. over you. Right? Yes. Yeah. And there are some of you in this room who did not know that you were coming into agreement things that just need to turn and repent. Mm -hmm. And there are some of you in this room who have almost given up. You've almost bought the lie that you've been disqualified, that you have almost forfeited too much, that you've given too much away, like, well, I just keep saying no, or I just keep, can't, like, um, not dismissing, but, like, almost counting myself out. And I felt like this morning, the Lord just wanted to remind you that he has called each and every one of you yeah. to fight the good fight. Yeah. And the good fight is to see the kingdom of God manifested in all of our lives. Yeah. To come out of the agreement with the lies of the enemy and to walk fully into everything that he has called you to. And so that is kind of all I had. I am a big fan of Q&A. And so I would love to pray over us, over what I just said, but then I would love to go into a time of Q&A, if that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Father, I thank you so much for each and every one of these women. I thank you that they are the heads and not the tail, that they are above and not beneath, and that they are your daughters. And as your daughters, they have both permission, but they also have authority that what you have extended through the cross is for each and every one of them, that they are permitted to walk fully in all that you have called them to. And every attempt of the enemy to distract and delay and devour is a vain attempt to extinguish what you have already determined over your daughters. So I declare and decree that only the word of God will be spoken over them, that only the word of God will be established over them. And that every single time the enemy whispers his lies, every single time the words of unworthiness, the words of rejection, the words of fear and anxiety, and the words that would say, oh, no, 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 that's not for you. Yep. Every time those words would rise to their minds, God, I pray that you would quench them. That when they crowned you as Lord and they mocked you with a crown of thorns, that thorns always choke out seed. And every bad seed that resides in their mind will be choked out with what your yes word says. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come in this next few moments together. I would pray that you would just completely demolish every inhibition, every insecurity, everything that would keep their mouths shut and keep them ineffective and that only your will would be done. Father, I thank you that you have given us every tool to fight, that our enemy is like a prowling lion seeking whom he may devour and he may not devour us. 
that he has no permission and he has no authority, that we are covered yes. by the blood of Jesus, yes. that every plot, plan, and scheme of the enemy is rendered useless against us, and that only your word will be established over us. Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.